Amy producer, is the most though. talented. Most, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In my opinion, a lot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really music, Jamie. acting, comedy. But, but Mahala, when it comes to 50 being a producer. Yeah. So you're right. It's cold. It's yeah. cold blooded. Jamie Foxx is on a different level, bro. No, no, he is. What's that? Uh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he be doing all that and he he tells the Bruh. fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, no, that that he went crazy with that. He went crazy with the they were doing a roast and there was a there was a comedian that like, bro, he was killing this nigga cuz this no nigga way. was trying to throw jokes at him. He was like, "No one's laughing at you." <laughs> like he started he just started going into the mic like, "Nigga, you should be quiet right now." You know what I, I mean? Think I see that, like yeah. that he was killing this nigga. That like, nigga is so like talented. Inner thoughts and shit like, bro. And he has like a new hairline every decade. Have you yeah. seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. His hairline shifts oh, and yeah. changes with it. Bro, it's bro. Jamie, Jamie Foxx following the same IG chicks as you is demoralizing. I'm you. <laughs> it's just like, you know, How old is he? He's like he's, 50. He's fi f I think like 40 something, yeah. You know? I'm sure he's enough. 50, bro. Almost 50, probably. I'm sure he's hit 50, yeah. bro. If Jay Z but, hit 50. But, you know, it's like ages, whatever. This nigga's so damn rich. Oh, yeah. That, like, in, you know what I mean? Like, niggas be following these IG models, like, one day, you know? <laughs> Jamie Foxx, like, today. <laughs> you know? Like, it's not gonna work out for you, my nigga. You feel me? I'm, bro. Yeah, he's 54, depressing. bro. <laughs> that shit's so depressing for me. That nigga is 54 <laughs> years old, 54? fam. That is a senior citizen up. right there. 30 hey, years of bread, bro. Hey, man. Welcome back to Ghost Talk. It is your host, Tom's of the Truth. We have you, the Honorable. Mohamed Sharif. And today we have a special guest. Very special guest. You know what's crazy? Today. I haven't taken out my notes in a while. Really? I had to, I had to put it in my notes. You know what I'm saying? He got you on the hot seat yeah, today, brother. Today we have a special guest. Let's talk a true bro. goat. I met years ago at the U of M. I didn't yes, know sir. dude was famous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cultural advocate on sets of works like Little America. Podcast producer. Mm -hmm. Journalist. Mm. Big homie on the block. I'm certified. Yeah, you yeah. do a lot sure, more sure. though. So like, if you can actually get into like, yeah, you're filling the dots. Most definitely, yeah. I'm a Hollywood. I like. I think um, working in media so is such a random industry because it is you be you end up becoming a multi hyphenate just by the nature of the work that you're doing. You're a writer. You're going behind a camera. You're doing media producer. So I tell I just tell people I'm a multimedia journalist, filmmaker, and then on top of all that, I just say storyteller. You know, mm. I try to just tell people storyteller, journalist, writer, um, and then now I'm trying to get in my producer bag. And yeah. So that's that's kind of where I'm headed towards right now. So, but bro, uh, yeah. we were just having this conversation outside the camera. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that there's a lot of people who are doing a lot behind the scenes yep. that you don't know about, yep. mm -hmm. and then they keep it that way. Yep. So how yep. like yeah. how does that work? Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to exactly, yeah, like it's a great question because like how the right now, for example, people don't see. The work that goes into this podcast right y'all are doing like you're saying you're taking out the notes so that's pre-production you know like you got producers you guys are not only the on-camera talent but you yeah. guys are also the behind the camera you know what i mean doing the work be beforehand yeah um when it comes to the when it comes to the i mean we're talking film tv i mean we can talk about it all doing that type of work and even right now kind of in a way you know we said we're going to get into this being a very meta conversation because we're talking about media we're talking about yeah. you know i mean you guys got people working behind the scenes you guys got people doing a lot of great work editing you feel me and mm -hmm. and, and and uh it's the credits that everybody sees of the movie right when people move you know leaving the movie theater mm -hmm. seeing those long list of names the motherfuckers getting paid the motherfuckers is making careers and doing things and and those are the people that work closely with the actors and the directors that we know about but those, you know, those people are the the go to folks uh, in the industry for sure. The, the question I had with that is a lot of people, yeah, that are that are creatives. The biggest thing for a lot of them is creating a brand for themselves, right? Yep. Like, yep. and usually they are the brand, yep. and that's how they get into a lot of doors. It's just like, yo, absolutely, my resume is nigga who I am. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, 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 So the yeah. people who don't have that, like, how do they get into the rooms of like? That's the, that's the other thing about this 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 line of work, man. I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of go for off of my experience, and then, I, and then we can kind of branch out. But, like, just to, uh, I usually tell people there's no specific way to get into media. Like, I know people, I got, I've worked with a producer who was a lawyer for 12 years, and then she ended up being a director on documentaries. You know what I mean? Like, there's people who, you know, again, journalism is the, the main way a lot of people get into some of this work. But, well, I'm highlighted. There's, there's no real route. There's no real clear formula to getting into becoming a filmmaker, becoming, you know, somebody who's in this world. So for me, I can kind of, I can kind of tell my story where it's like, you know, 
I came back. I came back to Minnesota about 2015, 2016 from uh, school. I went to school in Boston for a bit, right? Went there, didn't know what I wanted to do. I studied engineering. I studied, you know, political science, international <laughs> relations. I'm talking to myself like, yo, I'm going to be a diplomat. or yeah. And I'm like, nah, I'm going to be Tony Stark. You know what I mean? Then I'm like, <laughs> nah, yeah. I'm going to be, nigga, I don't know what I'm going to be, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like yeah. a kid. You just kind of holla, just, you know, thrown to the wolves. You know what I mean? You know, you got uh, uh, Sally May on you. You got, you know what I mean? Dean's on you. You got yeah. professors. And I'm just like, you know what? Let me take a step back. Went back home. And I've always loved watching movies. I always loved watching TV shows. It was like, especially being a refugee kid in St. Paul, bro. It's just like, you know, sheltered families over here. My mom them how long on, on you, you feel me? But it's like, you know what? Let me escape through this television. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Seeing the world that way. And so when I, when I got back, I was like, yo, I've always loved making movies. I even took a class in ninth grade. You know, some people recently, I was like, yo, I took a class in ninth grade during winter break to go learn how to take video and video production or some shit. Mm. So I'm like, that was my, you know, uh, driving force back then. Why did I, why did I leave it? You feel me? So boom. So I come back to, to Minnesota and I, and I link up with uh, a director by the name of Musa Saeed. Musa mm -hmm. was the director of a stray. Yeah, I know Musa. Yeah, yeah Musa, yeah, Musa's Musa. good people, bro. Yeah. He's teaching yeah. over at uh, Harvard now. I heard. Yeah, mashallah, man. Yeah. That, that man won Sundance Awards. He's 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 a phenomenal person, and and he showed love to our community oh, by yeah. doing oh, this, yeah. this film. One hundred percent. And if if people don't know Astray, I mean, they gotta know Astray. Go check like, it out. Yeah. Go check it out. Barak Barak Abdurrahman was in it. Mm -hmm. Musa director. And he had a screening. That's why that's why I show love to this dude because he came to Brian Coyle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he did a screening like. That's that's not often that you yeah. see a director like, yo, I don't care about the money I'm not, gonna get. Not only yeah. that, but he did it the right way. Like he yeah. came into the community, he's like, Well, I'm gonna be using y'all community and y'all yep. image in this film. Yep. What what's good, what's not, what can yep. I do, what can I do? Yep. Um, how can I help? Whatever. To he just he just kinda used the community in the right ways yep. instead of like exploiting Explo it. But Explo 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 question yeah. regarding the exploiting thing. Because yeah. Kanon had the exact same, the exact opposite experience. Yep. Yeah, he did. Right around, right around that time, and that was both my, like literally a stray, and Mogadishu, Minnesota, the HBO show that Kanon was in was kind of my origin story into getting into into media. Like right around that time, I, I hit Musa up after mm -hmm. the screening. I wrote an article about. It. That was like when I was first getting into writing as a journalist, like just writing you know community commentary pieces. And I went up to him. I'm like, Yo, Musa, how do I get into doing what you do, bro? Yeah. Like, how do I plug me in? You feel me? And he was like, Yo. I got a homegirl. She's doing a documentary about Wheel of You yeah. feel me? Like the, the nine boys that got, you know, caught up in that, that to me, it was entrapment. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was the feds building a case that they had on nothing. Mm -hmm. And we did a documentary on that. So he plugged me in with Yunus Lau, a filmmaker, a friend of his. And right around when we were filming, Mogadishu, Minnesota was being filmed yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Like, speak of exploitative it's like this community is already being under attack by the feds by you know what is it a, a counter of a cve, CVE countering yeah. violent extremism exactly. you feel me like that was a weird time in the community oh, yeah. where the feds was actively on us yeah you feel oh me? yeah and 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 um and so did y'all did y'all ever see that video that went viral with like the cops pepper spraying people mm -hmm. that I, that, shot, I was there yeah you was there yeah, right yeah i know you shot that too i, yeah, I shot that video yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. And, and 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 that was because we were filming at cedar at brian coyle talking mm -hmm. to people like yo what do you guys think about cve this mm -hmm. and that and then we just boom i'm along we're like that's so yeah. i'm running boom i get there and p cops is pepper so it was then, at yeah. somali it was somali independence day yep. and uh k9 was there and, and then there. Uh, Ooh, it was that day yep you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. and people were protesting yeah. the fact that you know yeah. you're using you're making this film that's exploiting yeah. the community yeah. And the, literally the feds, the, damn near yeah. the entire department the entire came park, yeah, yeah. And, like, and like we're pepper spraying kids, kids. bro, children will lie. And I want to get to the exploitive part too. Yeah, it's like, very exploitive. It's yeah. unnecessary, bro. Will yeah. lie. And it's the idea that, you know, I'm going to use these people, the, 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 the fear and the trauma yeah. and the fear margaring yeah. on both sides. Yeah. The fear that white people yeah. have yeah. of because of their lack of knowledge of, yeah. of our community, right? Yeah. To use that to exploit it, because like yeah. they're gonna watch it, cause they're gonna be like, "Oh my god! Like, mm -hmm. look at these people. This is what they are." While Holy the case is going on, they're already seeing it on yeah. Fox News, CNN. Nine um, young men found guilty of yeah. terror charges. Woo woo woo! And then six months later, a TV show drops. They knew yeah. what they were doing. Yep, they knew what they're doing. And uh, what's her name? Bigelow directed Captain it. Bigelow, zero, yep. Yep, zero Dark Thirty. So that was that was a whole tornado of like the wrong stuff at the wrong time and just the wrong story and like again like a stray. 
well, the movie is about a Somali young man who gets kicked out the house, you know, family issues, yeah. shit, shit that people deal with. And he, you know, he's a stray. He has, a, he's friends with a dog. That's the, that's the, you know, fantasy part of it. Niggas yeah. kicking it with dogs. Right in the house. <laughs> yeah. Might as well be a freaking, you know, Harry Potter movie yeah. at that point. You feel me? But so filling costs. And then at the same time, Mogadishu, Minnesota. So I'm looking at it like, yo, here's, so I wrote a piece in MinPost that was like the importance of, you know, uh, something about our image. I was like, the, and the importance of controlling our image, I think is what it's called. And I was like, look at this film astray and how it actually, like you were saying, mm -hmm. the, he went into the community. He got people from the community in it. Shot in Cedar, he got the native community. He got the black community. He got the Somali community on point. And then this HBO exploitative thing, which they regret, I think, because mm -hmm. they didn't pick up the show. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't even make, they, the pilot yeah. didn't even, <laughs> didn't even finish. Oh, yeah. That's so funny, bro. Because <laughs> yeah. they were like, yeah, we ain't touching that. Sorry, k -9. You feel me? And like, yeah. I think... Kanan, you know what I mean? God bless him. You feel me? He's done some good work with Castle Rock. It's another t Somali show uh, or a show that had a lot of Somali people in it. But at that point, you know, I think he he had signed on. Catherine Bigelow had a problematic right pass yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. Zero Dark Zero Thirty. Dark 30 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, that was an interesting moment for me that kind of propelled me into like, yo, I'm working on this documentary. I'm seeing how Hollywood is. So it's like the documentary is like the real life stuff that we're shooting, you know, real people, real stories. And at the same time, we're trying to get that accurate because even then some documentaries kind of mess us up and, you know, get selective with the editing. And then now at the same time, we got Hollywood still continuing to put us in a bad mm -hmm. light. So we got the news on us. We got the Hollywood, you know, Hollywood folks on us. And it was just all bad. That's kind of, you know, that's pretty much what I tell people is like what motivated me to really kind of get into this um, industry. Yeah. So. That's beautiful, bro. Um, so speaking speaking upon uh, just beautiful Somali films, right? Yeah. Um, and positive Somali films and like just portraying ourselves, being able to tell our own stories, which I think is yeah. is a big driving force in your life as well. Because you yeah, said yeah. one of your professions is just storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, you were mm -hmm. moderating the Q and A. Yeah. At um, yeah the Great, the Great Bigger's Bigger Wife. Wife. Yeah. So tell us about that. Just tell us about. What you thought of that film? Because I, I, I to this day, well, I, at least once a day, I think about that film. Yeah. After I watched it, I'm like, no, wow. Shout out, shout out to Khadr al uh, Ahmed and the director and and, and Umar and yes. uh, Yasmin and everybody that was involved in that project. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I want to go back. I want to finish on that question because yes. he was asking about like how do people get into. It. So I was just saying my, like how I got yeah. into it, but how other people can get into it is just by doing. You mm -hmm. feel me? And 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 to to get into Grave Digger's wife, like his story, Khadr was telling us is like, you know, he was he did short films. Mm -hmm. And you know, brothers from Finland, you feel me? Small Somali population out there. He just picked up a camera and just went with it. You know? Yeah. Him and Umar, the lead actor in Allah, the Grave Digger's yeah. wife, did a short film fifteen years ago yep. together. Oh, that's crazy. Isn't that mm -hmm. <laughs> that's wild, bro? And and but but it's funny because it's like God, that's, yeah. that's not to speak over, but that's yeah, common yeah. in the film that, industry. I was just finna say, yeah, yeah. Golly, you see that like I think it was like Andrew Garfield mm -hmm. and like a bunch of like big names were like, oh yeah, we was roommates back in the day. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Networking like, really network, matters. Yeah, it's like and it's like you know people have like you know whether it's like folks that you grew up with the neighborhood, folks you went to school with, or folks you just on the struggle coming up with. Like all right, yo, we we all living in this you know city in L.A., London, New York, whatever it is, Twin Cities, mm -hmm. and we want to create. It's the community you create that you yeah. build off with. So uh, that's yeah. that's the other beautiful thing about this industry, I think, is the collaborative nature of it. So um, Khadr, Umar, you know, they worked together in the past. And, and Khadr, to his credit, he was like, yeah, I'm not working with nobody else besides my, my guy yeah. Umar again. I have to. So well, I, that, that, movie, that movie was a beautiful thing because it's just like, it's the culmination of like, you know, it's funny. Because Gravedigger's wife is something new to us, mm -hmm. like as as you know, folks growing up in in the you know in in but I can come having something at that level of production. You feel me? But Somalia, we have a history of films. Oh yeah, we have a beautiful, beautiful, long history about over a hundred years history of of cinema. Of, I mean, forget cinema, Dakin Kenny. You know, Mahala mm -hmm. You know, where we have an oral tradition. We're storytellers by nature. I feel like it's in our DNA, damn near. You feel me? Facts. You feel me? And so Mahala. So to say, I say that to say that what Khadr did was a culmination of so many different things. And he really took the torch from so many great filmmakers, so many great storytellers and went with it. So Filin yeah, like, you know, it, he started off at the Cannes Film Festival, which if people don't know, the Cannes Film Festival is the biggest film yep. festival in the mm -hmm. world. You know what I mean? So we got, we got, we got the great, you know, Minneapolis, you know, Film Society Festival here, the Minneapolis International, uh, Minneapolis St. Paul International Film Festival, which I volunteered, I, I volunteered with them years ago, did box office stuff just so I could learn. And that's the other thing. It's like people, you got to go into the festival circuit. You got to learn from them. You got to go behind the scenes in the, you know, the news studios. Like just, I was doing whatever I could to kind of 
literally you got to get in where you fit in real talk you know what i mean and yeah. so and so that was that was my experience and what Khadr was saying was for him doing those short films working on productions eventually led up to him being selected kind of damn near drafted by the Cannes film festival people to develop this script and then they you know helped him out like europe is a beautiful place where it's like in terms of arts, it's not a beautiful place in other in that sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, in, in terms of how, for artists, you feel me? They give money out. Oh, yeah. Um, it's Germany, crazy. So I told you about the film we're doing, Blight. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like going to be like a sci-fi Somali film, yep. which is going to be dope. Fire, I think it's going to be amazing. Yep. The guy who's directing it is ger he's from Germany. And he was okay. like, yeah, like Germans, if you're a German citizen, you can get like yep. $600,000, $500,000 from the Easy. government. Easy. What? To make films. <laughs> well, lie to make films straight up. Just like that if you're yeah. a citizen and they'll just dish yep. out the money because like they want the arts. Yep. They want these things. And the, I feel like it's because they have an appreciation for it that yep. we don't have. It's just been privatized here yeah. so much that like that doesn't really exist with the government. Yeah. I don't. Is there even grants like that? where Only they, only with. Um, so I have the right now I'm doing a, a documentary with uh, SPNN and, and it's called New Angle Fellows and we got a little bit of money from the Jerome Foundation through the National Foundation of the Arts. So that's like the federal government putting money towards documentaries. That's the only way that, you know, that we'll do stuff like that. Really, like you said, America is a corporate ass country. You know, yeah. America itself is a corporation. You mm -hmm. feel me? And so these countries, whether it's Germany, uh, I think for, for the Gravedigger's wife, it was France, Germany, Finland, all co-produced this production together and filmed it in, in Djibouti. The nations um, themselves. The nations co themselves. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, wow. that, that, that used to be a thing back in the day. It's just like you would have money come from Japan, mm -hmm. money come from London, and they would make some fire, you know, like, you know, movie that had to be cross-culture or something like that. And there's always these stipulations. But there's going to be stipulation whether it's private, whether it's public. Mm -hmm. But Wallahi, man, like what Khadr did, again, from, from the time that he started off doing filmmaking in Finland to taking it to Djibouti, which is, yeah. I mean, that's an amazing place right now for film. Um, have y'all heard about the movie Don Yellow? Don Yellow, Don Yellow, yep. this guy, you know me on that. You know he's what on mean? it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's I'm not a, on it. He's just on like uh, just, on that type he, of shit. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, like especially if you're doing this blight piece where it's yeah. like, bro, like look at like how Jordan Peele almost fast forwarded where black filmmakers were. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean, getting into horror, like mm. the with fact one that movie. with one movie, that's it. If, it's crazy. Like how, how, that's how all it took. That's all it took because it's like, how did we not see ourselves as being able to be in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like candy, you know, candy man was great, but that yeah. also had to, you know, it was, it was very white, whatever, you know, but yeah. it was get out us now with blight. Mm -hmm. It's like you pushing the, the, the culture forward by mm -hmm. doing that. You feel very me? Much, very you feel much, me? So, yeah. man, shout out. So it's just like with Donnyero and, and, and the grave digger's wife, Djibouti now is becoming a country where it's mm -hmm. like slowly becoming, I, I kind of call it Somali Bollywood, you know what I mean? In a way where they're trying to, you know, create a, a, a so the director of, of Don Yoro is her name is Lula Ismail Ali, uh, or Ali Ismail. She's a, a Somali filmmaker, um, Somali Canadian filmmaker. You know, and and she, um, well, I mean, she she helped out on the Grave Digger's Wife as well, and she's just into promoting positive you know, stories for us and getting away from the negative stereotypes. Yeah. So going back back to the exploitative stuff, I mean, half the time in movies we either. Pirates or, or terrorists, terrorists yep. you feel me? Mm -hmm. And it's a very there's this thing. You know, there's this thing that we we use um, for for because I'm producing yeah, that film, so yeah. I gotta go out and like yep. pitch it and yep. tell people about yep. it and tell them to get. I, I what I what we do is we put like six or seven Somali movies uh, yep. posters together, and okay. every single one of them, yeah. Somali man is holding an AK-47, and all the posters. Yeah, uh, fishing without nets. There's yeah. an AK-47. Yeah. Pirates of Somalia. There's an AK-47. Yeah. Captain Phillips is an AK-47 yeah. and all these it's like yeah. it's just we have been like almost violence. glued together with yeah. with violence, violence. Yeah. we're not inherently violent people like we not are at all we're like just the sweetest kindest funniest yeah. most fun loving people goofy is, goofy goofy is like bro. that our needs to be expressed crazy. I know our comedy is crazy I yeah. say this all the time but <laughs> I, well, I really wish just for a day the entire world spoke and understood Somali like mm. I think it would turn like that people would oh, understand yeah. okay yeah, these niggas are hilarious bro, like did you guys get to see the viewing of the Grave Digger's Wife? Uh, you was there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. I did, did you? I so, and, and, and Muhammad could speak to this. It was like, bro, I think the first one that, which you were at, there was a good amount of, because this is, granted, the festival scene is very white. Yeah, you know what I mean? This is. Is, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was an international film festival, but, you know, majority of people, I mean, we're in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's keep it a buzz. It's a <laughs> very on. white state. You feel me? But these are people that had an appreciation for international art. You feel me? They want to get cultured. So they came in. I'm sitting next to, you know, 80, 90-year-old man, yep. mind you, white man. 
and he's having a blast, bro. Mm -hmm. This man's cracking up. Like, you know, at first he was beefing with the smile shorty in front of us because she kept on bringing, he's like, hey, your phone. put your phone down. <laughs> I'm like, and I was on his side. I'm not going to lie. But I was like, I'm like, hey, you know, Bartholomew, relax. You know what I mean? Can't be, you know what I mean? Can't be going at my sister like that. But you know what yeah, I mean? You're She's right. not wrong. You know what I mean? yeah. You're right, brother. But like, yeah. that's my sister. Bro, I literally, I, I literally was like, She's going to put it away. He was like, All right. Okay. All right. Like, yeah. I'll take, <laughs> his blood what pressure it? was. I'll take your word for it, buddy. <laughs> you know? You're one of the good ones, aren't you? I'm like, Nigga, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? but 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 no it was yeah. because that was that's that's him and his wife probably come to this thing every year yeah, like clockwork yeah. you know what i mean and this was the first time they seen somali people mm. on the big screen and he's probably like living in the twin cities probably watching i don't know i'm i'm, I'm painting a picture on this man you yeah. feel me probably seeing fox news mm -hmm. hearing about terrorism recruiting he, he drives terrifying. past cedar quick yeah. as fuck <laughs> he's like let me get the fuck I mean, up out of here bro. please don't be listening to this little podcast right, right. now Nigga, that's, that's not me, me. <laughs> <laughs> i'm cool yeah, yeah. culture to shit actually yeah. you know I but, eat some boosters every weekend <laughs> now you find some of them bro yeah. there was there was some Adam folks at uh, Abu Bakr one time mm. just like a few weeks ago mm. I was bro I was like what's going on here bro didn't oh, yeah. you take you know? Andrew Schultz to Gurhlo I did yeah how does that, that even happen that was that's nah, fun yeah, that's, I'm, that's, I'm, beef yeah. with, I'm beef with him now yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and him got beef now cause you took Andrew Schultz to Gurhlo yeah I did yeah yeah but you didn't take him to the Najibs he's in the Najibs family gotcha gotcha next time that's a great spot though. yeah no Kuhlo Kuhlo is Kuhlo? Like, it's Kuhlo just, is amazing yeah. no it's good it's the food standard. is good well, they're not paying us though so yeah, yeah. facts facts yo send us a St uh, yeah. sponsor yeah. sponsor yeah. Najib's not paying us either yeah. so uh, I'm done with the Najib sponsors <laughs> <Hey. laughs> he's not paying us listen <laughs> hey man there's uh I mean we definitely gonna get into the monetization conversation oh yeah I mean, I'm, 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 I'm about oh, all of definitely that got most to. definitely most yeah. definitely but but with uh yeah with, with Andrew I mean speak, speaking of somebody who like that nigga is hilarious funny 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 guy real real man you know what I mean like he's just he's just he's a brother bro and and um speaking he's of very culture, racially ambiguous too what is yeah, he's yeah. white he's, he's uh german and scottish you know what i mean i thought how he was did, italian for a minute yeah. Yeah. one question is yeah. just like new york, how does new york he, is what it is is he just oh. yes, new york, is yeah. he just very good at just like understanding different cultures That's or does he take yeah, the he's time from to new york. study it no no no, 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 no. he's a new yorker uh, he's like um both he's like yeah. he's like pete P, uh, P. Davidson. P. Davidson. Yeah, P. yeah. Davidson. New York is a New Yorker yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. I mean, in New York City, like that, bro. Yeah, like you got, you got the, you got the West, you got the Caribbeans, mm -hmm. you got Spanish you know, Harlem, folks, Spanish Harlem. Oh, yeah. You feel me? You're just exposed to so many different people. And with with uh, Andrew, like touring and you know, me and communities, like he had come to Minnesota a few times. That's how we met. It's like he was doing a show here, linked up, just chopped it up, and you know, like from then, just you know, been exchanging, you know, conversations, and and I uh, got to go on his podcast out there in New York and just chopped it up with him and Charlemagne and. But but what it is is it really is tapping into the communities that you you know are exposed to you. So mm -hmm. it's like he exposes himself to the communities, learns from them, and then puts that in his comedy, and oh. that goes crazy. You feel me? And so just just like you know our our, our old homie Bartholomew being you know <laughs> like exploited you know uh, uh, you know seeing different communities on screen, Andrew's over here seeing them in person and is like yo folks got stories to tell. But in his way, what he does as a stand up comic, which is smart, is getting stories from us, hearing funny things, you know what I mean? And then, because I know we have forehead jokes amongst ourselves yeah. all day, you feel yeah. me? He hears a couple of forehead I jokes, you feel me? Yeah. And then he goes crazy viral with it, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Which is, and, and and I think, you know, so I took him to Qurhulu and that's a, uh, one of his vlogs or whatever, me and him, bro, I got killed in that video. I what got niggas killed me. In wait, wait, what do you mean? Like, they're like, this nigga does not know how to eat baris. Oh, this nigga's baris. <laughs> like, I'm what, like, are like, you yo. using a spoon? No, I was using my hand. They're like, but I was nigga, like, this nigga's representing us. But yeah, that, out of like, every how, nigga that could have represented who us. Who hired him? Who? Uh, who's, they were trying yeah. to pull my card. The only reason why, bro, is I was eating baris like I was eating it at home. I had no hashol sahib. I was over uh, like, oh, that's good. I was. That's how you eat baris for the culture. Niggas wanted me. I thought you were being timid with it. Yeah, niggas wanted to be timid. And I'm no, like, no, they're wrong. But, but you don't is, eat bris like that. You're supposed to do the law, bro. When I tell you, like, half the <laughs> comments, yeah, you have well, like, that's how yeah, real that's niggas how eat. It. That's how real niggas eat. Yeah, but half the comments were dedicated to how this me, this nigga eats mm. bris. Listen, and no. I, but that's our people, though. I love yeah. our people. We are very highly critical. Oh, yeah, very critical. Very yeah, critical. Very critical. Did y'all see recently a couple things? Toronto, there was a play. Did I you see, see that? that? The Somali play? <gasps> Oh, you know the, guy the guy that was praying on stage. <laughs> the guy that did Who was that play. about? <laughs> I didn't see Yo, that. I, I did that not was, yeah. see that. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if, if there can be like a thing thrown up, but like this is this is a play in Toronto mm. about Toronto Somalis, but it was like the entire cast was 
African American folks. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, it was it was I called it Somali Hamilton because it was like mm. they were rapping, singing. You feel me? But it was it was a, aside from that, which I heard. You know, she took out. You know, God bless. Like it was Somali sister wrote that, and I and I and I wish her all the success. But niggas was killing her. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, what is this? Hanya, you know, woo, woo, woo. Toronto's down. You know what yeah. I mean? Da da da. You know, and like I mean, we up, but baby. You feel me? Twin Cities. So. That's very <laughs> common, though, bro. Yeah. No, but it's very criticism. common. The Everything criticism. that comes out, there's criticism. Yeah, yeah. I'm but sure I you guys like, get it too. Like, you know, oh, people yeah. always want to. You know what I mean? Our comments. Here's, here's yeah. what it is. Our this is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite. This is my favorite thing. What is it? What is Somebody it? comes up to me and they have just this, like, very dedicated and like very long ass, long yeah. ass yeah. argument yeah. why yeah. what we're saying on this podcast is absolute bullshit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. got points and it's a presentation, and everything. Yeah. When they get done, I just simply ask them, "Did you watch the clip?" Mm, or did you watch the, the episode? episode context and they go no i just saw the clip fam but like you know what i'm saying uh, all right shut the fuck up because exactly. you all know what's going on None. you just watch the clickbait the yeah. point of it is yeah. to go it's to bring you in so yeah. it's for all y'all motherfuckers that be <laughs> coming to me watch the whole episode <laughs> it was hilarious yeah. that's not gonna be a clip so only people who watch the full episode yeah. for the see it anyway. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. agree yeah, with we you, might man. We might have it as a clip because <laughs> yeah. just just to, just to highlight, start beef with the well, yeah, commenters yeah. real talk. Well, but, yeah. So that that went viral, and there was something else. Um, there was a lot of oh chunks. Uh, Chunks and his homies were talking the about stuff, the Hawaiian stuff. Hawaiian. She must be uh, Hawaiian. She must be. Is she? Is she Hawaiian? Yeah. It was funny as hell. I was like, this is niggas say Hawaiian. Yeah. The Hawaiian. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, so, but niggas started killing Chunks, saying, "Why are you exposing people to?" I'm like, Yo, what? Niggas people know. learn stuff. People like, learn stuff. It's, so this is the thing. Two topics at hand here: the criticism for people in media, like for ourselves. You feel mm-hmm. me? And the work that we're trying to do. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're not going to get everything correct. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes, and that's how. You know, with the audience, we know we're working with everybody. It's cool. But at the same time, it's like, that's one topic, we're criticism. But the other one is like, we have to realize we have a beautiful culture that mm. deserves to be shared. Oh, yeah. It deserves to be shared. So whether it's the Gravedigger's Wife, Astray, this type of podcast, what Chunks is doing, what Abai is doing with her play, these are just different forms of us trying to monetize and share the culture and expand it because I think what people don't really realize is that you know, people talk about like, oh, we got to gate, you know, gatekeep the culture, gatekeep the culture. And it's like, okay, we finna gatekeep it, but if we keep on gatekeeping, it's finna die. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we don't share it amongst ourselves and, and, and bring people in, whether it's like, you know, funny niggas like Andrew Schultz to, you know, come in, you know, learn about the community, take him to put hello, getting jokes, you know what I mean? And then boom, he, he does, st- you know, this guy's a guy with a platform of millions of people. Yeah. He does a joke about Somali people and he's like, oh yeah, they're good people. That does a lot for us. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It does a lot for us for Musa to make a stray and for people to see that at Sundance and it win awards. Mm-hmm. It does a lot for our brother Khadr to tour the goddamn world, oh, win yeah. awards for the Gravediggers. Uh, bro, it's a love story. The Gravedigger's Wife is a love story. How many Somali songs do we hear about about Ja'el? But we never see it in film format mm-hmm. because Hushot can, you feel me? Of course, we got, we got that whole thing too. But it's all about sharing the culture. And I really do believe at the end of the day, if a culture is not shared, a culture will die. Especially us being diaspora. And that's a whole other thing. And speaking on our culture just dying, this... The idea that we had, like, you spoke on this earlier. You're mm-hmm. like the idea that we had prior to all this mm-hmm. in the 20s, the yeah. 30s. There's just beautiful art being done. Yeah, yeah. The 80, in the 80s, you said yeah. Manasir yeah, had an entire Salah. film yep. that he lost. So if you could speak legend. on that in that relationship, yeah, man, legend. You know, we, we you know, we, you and I were, you know, in class uh, at the U with with uh, <laughs> the, goat. Know, the goat. You know, what I mean, definitely would be amazing to to have him here. You know what I mean? I'm like saying. a, a, a legend saying. like him. Yeah. And, and if folks are not aware of, you know, the, the professor Sarit uh, Salah. He is a professor at the U, but even before then, he was an educator in Somalia. He was like, I think he was like, I mean, like with mm-hmm. like, I think it was like education, and he helped. He taught us, you know, the grammatical Somali and the language there at the U. But it was him and some others who developed written Somali mm-hmm. in the seventies, and so he was also known as a poet, you know, Gabigi Salagiyakani, and then also uh, as a playwright. So it's funny that like we kind of shy about, you know, we're very shy about media and film and television, you know, especially if folks, and I'm sure there's many folks who, who might be watching this might relate. They want to be actors. They want to yeah. be directors. They want to be in the scene, maybe people behind the camera and learning about stuff like that. And they tell that to their family. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, like, you know, it's, it's x out, but it's like, but you know, weren't y'all going to watch the wides back home all the time? You feel me? What they called uh, yeah. web video? Yeah, yeah. But but it's like, how how do we have that? And then when we come here, we want to like. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Culture dying. 
You feel me? It's like culture was popping back home, and as soon as we get here, we we're, we're done with the with the place. Bro, but I feel like know? what I was talking to my dad about. This, I feel like yeah. it's age too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like when they were younger, they were really hip on American facts, culture. Facts, if you talk facts, about facts, it, yeah, yeah. Denzel and all that, they was yeah. really hip in yeah. the Vikings Disco, and, yeah. and, doing and Michael Disco Jordan and Michael, all that. Yeah. Michael Jackson, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they got yeah. older. And I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like something, it has to do with the idea of Islam. It's like the older yeah. you get, the idea of like, yo, I'm getting closer to death. So yeah, I got to yeah, make sure yeah. I'm on my dean. Yep. That's true. Right? Yep. I think Absolutely. that has a huge play. A hundred percent. And and I think that there can be a balance of doing halal content. You know what I'm saying? Like, in like again, what, what Professor uh, Sari Saleh did was he made a movie about Darwish. And mm-hmm. it was a movie about Sayyid Muhammad Abdullah Hassan, the Mad Mullah. I wish it was called Mad Mullah. That's, That'd be a cold ass now. You feel me? That's that's my dream movie. You feel yeah. me? It's like doing like damn near like a, a Django style yeah. Mad Mullah. Like, <laughs> Yo, that you feel me? Goosebumps you feel me? Like having, you know, niggas on the fucking horse coming it, through, like yeah. kicking the, you know, the lieutenant, oh, the, the lieutenant colonel that got kicked off the cliff. It has to be, like, uh, it has, it has to be, to be in Somali too. Has to be, yeah. has to be, and there, so this is the beautiful thing about it. The feeling, the feeling of Mahala Malinka did, it is in six languages because back then in the twenties in the war there were Italiani, there were mm. British, Hindi because they were on the side of the British, and so this movie came together in nineteen, I think it was nineteen eighty four, eighty five. He shot it in the course of like a year, year and a half or something like that with a budget of like one point three million in their time, which is like, I think by inflation, whatever it is, I think it's like about three, four million, which is still like a small film, but that's like a good yeah, amount of money. that's a small film, You yeah. feel me? But he worked around it. You know, he was, he was telling me, I interviewed him for Sahan Journal. There's a piece about how, you know, no, I mean, it's not really a spoiler, you know, but the story, as the story goes, he makes this movie, films it with a bunch of different people, uh, Americans, British folks. He, he calls niggas from Bollywood back then to yeah. come to uh, Somalia to film it. Showcases it in Kismayu, Hargeisa, Hamar. Go. I think he even goes up to Dubai at the mm. time, you know, and like showcases it there. And the movie gets destroyed during the Civil War and is lost forever. Wow. Until in like 2020, winter of 2020, I think it was, he rediscovers it with the help of a documentary filmmaker. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on bro's name, but I think it's Mark or Ben. Um, they found the footage? They, found, they actually found the footage. They found the, they found the footage thirty something years. He told us in our class, and then I, th- I think it was like that winter he left, and there was rumors like, "Yo, he's going to he's going to India. Like he's something is in India." Oh, blah, blah. he's in the works. Yeah, you know. So he he over here. It's like somebody basically what what it was is that in you know with the civil war that happened in Wuthering Kenya, a lot of cultural stuff was lost, you mm-hmm. know, and 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 destroyed. And one of it was was Finn and his, and his movie was called the the Somali Dervishes. And so anyway, he loses the, the footage, he finds it 30 years later, he gets it back, and now it's in the process of how do we digitize this film? How do we move this film into, you know, the, 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 the mainstream again? But the fact that that's the only, mind you, that's the only Somali director, Somali made film that exists today, everything else gone, that's made by a Somali filmmaker. Italian and British films are the only ones that still exist to this day, but well, I did, Kenny, we, we, we have a long history, not only with film, but mm-hmm. with plays, with radio. You know, we, we were we were early to radio compared to a lot of people in the 19, early 1900s. So, yeah, none of this is new to us. Wasn't bro. It was there true to us. Um, one of the first Pan-African uh, film festivals was also held? In- he was right. This nigga is on it, bro. I'm this telling this you, nigga he's is nice. <laughs> My nice. nigga, I mean, listen, hey, if we ever, we ever, we ever need trivia, Somali cinema trivia, Jeopardy, my nigga, yeah, Muhammad, I've been, you, you I've been, I've been practicing for Jeopardy my whole <laughs> life. And, <laughs> no, then, but this and then Alex yeah. Trebek died, and I was like, fuck that God, shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Aaron is good at it, too. Yeah. A lot. I think they gave it to Shorty. They gave it to Shorty from, from Big, Big Bang, Bang Theory. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she has yeah. a doctorate degree. Yeah, so she's smart. She's yeah. actually, she, she really is a nerd. You know what I mean? Aaron Rodgers is low key a nerd, too. Yeah, yeah, He said, what he said, I'm I'm immunized. That's that's why I'm like, yeah, this nigga's not. This nigga, get him yeah. off Jeopardy. Get him off Jeopardy. <laughs> he said, I'm <laughs> he, said I'm <laughs> he, he did what Joe Rogan did and stuff? Yeah. Joe, bro, Joe Rogan was that nigga's doctor. He was texting Joe Rogan for advice and shit. Joe Rogan was like, like Yo, that ass? That ass. Yeah. Joe Rogan was like, yeah, I was texting Aaron, uh-huh. with Aaron and uh, Pat I told him, do was this. <laughs> what did he take? So, he know. took that one thing too. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Ivermectin. Yep. I think he took Ivermectin. What is that? It's that. Uh, it's, it's some shit. It's some, uh, shit, really right? yeah, it's some shit. But. but <laughs> It works. Sorry, no, I was kidding. No, but 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 speaking of speaking Ed of this Mahalid, podcast uh, is not going nowhere. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. already been canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Joe Rogan, we need you. You're all like some Star Wars shit. Yeah. Anti anti parasite. It can treat infections caused by it's like for what horses. The? Malaria and shit. Yeah, yeah. tread worms. So horse, yeah, horse tranquilizer, some shit like that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> <thing> <laughs> shit like that. But no, but no, so 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 speaking of um 
you had you had stated the fact that oh the Pan African Film yeah. Festival. Look at that. The fact that in the 1960s we're holding it down for a Pan African Film Festival in Somalia, with with film. I think that candy, bro. Like that's the other thing we have to really kind of not only see ourselves, and, and and I'll get to this in terms of where we are in the West in a bit, but where we are in terms of African history is legendary. Mm -hmm. Oh we yeah, were, bro. I like to tell niggas we was running arms. We we were the gun runners in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> That's some real nigga shit, well, like, bro. Yeah. Well, like we was gun runners. You feel me? Like for the Africans, of, for, for the, the Africans, Africans. Anti, yeah. anti colonial. Anti -colonial. Like crazy. Bro, speaking yeah. from a point of view, bro, I, no one ever taught me that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. The only you thing, know. like first, yeah. uh, shout out to my parents. Hoy, yeah. I focus on my niggas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we shout only talked about the Rafad in yeah. Africa, yeah. Yeah. and that was it. Yeah, like no, there was same. nothing same. else. Yeah. So the idea that now it's just like, yo, look back at it and yeah. see how great it was. I don't know if for y'all parents. If I go to my mom and I tell her all this thing today, yeah. she gonna hit me with the same bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's why it, is it like yeah. that? I think. I mean, shit, we can get into it right Let's now, bro. Get it, like, we might as well. 1993, right? I was born in 93. 91 is what people say is when the Civil... Nobody talks about the Civil War. Mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest elephant in the room, you feel yeah. me? Bro? Nobody, wants to, Nobody wants to ever fucking talk about the fact they'll why talk are we about, here? They'll talk about why it started. Why it started, yep. And they, they'll talk about... Ooh, they're this, arguing, yeah. the finger yep. pointing. Yep. And they'll talk about yep. how we ended up. Yep. But like... Well, you're not lying. The guts Nobody of it. Nobody talks about the war. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. You know, before we get into it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Education is important. Education, Very important. Highly. You're a gopher. Highly. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm a gopher. Yes, sir. Proud, right? Go gopher. You went to, you went to Augsburg. Yeah. Big yeah. Yeah. Recently graduated. Yeah. 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 Can I just right, so congratulations. Thank you so much. And so we so as a team man. Man. Yep. have decided to get him a gift for graduating. Ooh. Oh, right? shit. And so we just wanted to present it right now. Whoa. So first of all, congratulations. This is fire with the card. Yeah, so congratulations! Oh. It's from everyone. It's from Thunder. It's from Hanad. It's from Mahad. It's, it's from me too. Me. I didn't know it's about this Biggie. stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's also it's from yeah. our. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> so congratulations! Congratulations, congratulations on graduating, Mohammed. You see, I can read, yeah. guys. <laughs> I read it. <laughs> It hey, thank Masha, you guys so much. Hannah told you, bro. him into the ears yeah. as he was looking at it. He's like, yo, this is what it says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slowly but surely. So read this right here, all right? Should, no, should I sure. open it? Yeah, yeah, open it, man. You got Come to. On, you got to open it. What is it? Open it. Should I do that with the white kids doing Christmas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if it's an avocado? What if it's an avocado? That's, I mean, millennial gifts. You know what I mean? It's a good millennial an gift. avocado. Bro, in this economy, that's gold Thanks. right there. Thanks. The video? <laughs> oh, the kid, the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so exciting. That's fire. Hey. I've never, I've never gotten a gift like this. You know that, right? I grew up poor. <laughs> Poverty. <laughs> you gonna flip this as soon as he sees it. Is it? It's a badass <laughs> shorty on it. That's the gift. <laughs> hey. There you go. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Holy Call shit! Me. What the fuck, yo? This shit is fire. Yo. Y'all see this grown shit? Man shit? Grown man shit. Check the, check the, check the back side of it. No. Engraves. You gotta read it, read it, read it all. Oh, this is so fire. Read it, read it, read it. I am I'm about to wear this shit like every day. Actually, nah, I'm, not, I'm probably gonna What is it? What does it say? What is it? P keep being <laughs> <laughs> Yo yo, Hannah, hey, hey, Hannah, Hannah, go ahead. Read it. Read it for me. There you go. It, there's like plastic on it, that's why it's Hannah, slowly. It says keep being a goat forever. Sincerely, the Ghost Talk family. Oh my goodness! Thanks. Give it up, give it up. Hey man, congratulations on that, bro. Oh, that's so much, and now, so all the people that be in the comments, I'm like, why so all these niggas that don't have degrees doing podcasts? Hey, all the man. niggas say that. All they do is sit around. All, the all they do is sit around and, and just talk on the. You guys are grown men. My I got two degrees, not one, two. Mashallah. No Allah. major nigga. That's the thing. Talk to niggas, me. Then. Niggas just gotta say mashallah, bro. Yeah. Mashallah. Uh, so. So that's the criticism. Niggas really be talking about niggas got to yeah. have degrees to no, do podcasts. It's just, you know what it is? And we talked about this and we won't, this will be probably the last time we address it. Yeah. It's this idea that, yeah, these guys, they don't do anything else. Hamza doesn't have, you know, uh, an entire job career like as a, a tech, tech motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like this nigga's building entire systems for yeah. giant just corporations. Shit he Allah. just talks shit yeah. on a podcast, you know? He's just some guy with a beard yeah. that has no direction in life. He just wakes up and hoy his home. Yeah, Hamza's a uh, future no. tech mogul. You're an artist. You no, feel he, me? Is he is a tech, he is a tech he is a tech mogul. You are a tech yeah. mogul. You feel me? Well, yeah. well, I, you, you are. And, and, and you're an artist. You've been in the community, community leader. You yeah. feel me? So Jeopardy. Allah, Je Just Jeopardy master. Yeah. You feel me? And, and, and I mean, what, they always say, I, I don't like the, 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 what's it called? The phrase, those who don't do teach. I think it's those who don't do criticize. Oh, yeah. 
Hundred percent. Those who don't do my nigga, they are professional critics. Yep. You feel me? And niggas be. I feel like Twitter, Instagram comments gave way too much freedom to niggas who just sit at home. You feel me? And just and just be. And niggas can kill me. I don't care. I listen. I got the resume to back myself up. You feel me? And as do y'all. You feel me? But it's a lot of folks who got a lot of shit to say. But nothing that they're doing. It's like, yo, just at least mahalo, just say mashallah to niggas who's trying to do something, having fun, having conversations that need to be had. And 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 to the point of, that, that you mentioned, Hamza, about education. There's education of what we, you know, getting degrees, going to college, you it's feel like me? It. Like it's it's it, that's one type of education. There's another type of education of life and education of self. You feel me? And what the conversation that we've been having about representation of Somalis in film, Somali storytellers. It's, it's, it's having that knowledge of self. I mean, there's, there's, there's um, a lot of research papers that say if kids know about themselves, if, if kids have accurate representation about themselves in the media, if kids know their, where they come from and have cultural understandings, it actually boosts their confidence. It actually boosts their test scores. I'm going to say that again. If kids know about their own cultural background, it boosts their test scores wow. at school. There's oh, like research different. stuff on this. You feel me? And 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 that and that goes to show the importance of knowing our history. It's, it's an importance of knowing where you're from, who you are, the lineage you have, the good and the bad. You feel me? The good and the bad. Like we should talk about the civil war. We should talk about what Somalia was like prior to that. What Somalia could be like in the future to that. And I'm and I'm gonna say something that uh, I think a lot of people might get upset about. You feel me? That's their problem, though. It's really not your problem. We can't control, yeah, we can't control how people feel, you yeah. feel me? It's up we can't, to them. We can't, it's up to them, you feel me? But I'm going to just keep it a buck, like, it's just, you know, I, how long we been in America? Roughly 30 years, yep. you know? Yep. I'm 28. I understand it, Hamza, you're 26, right? 26, yeah. Okay, I just want to... I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no. I think what was back, enough... That's called a callback, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, it I, took I, me a little bit I like took the, I took the... I took the... the the wheels <laughs> off your joke. Yeah, I should have no, no, killed it. Was good, it was good. I got love for my brother. Good, I can't. I can't do it. To, it damn, good. I couldn't do that again. No, that's not gonna work. <laughs> no, it's love. It's love. Yeah, but no, I just. I'm just saying. Like, I'm 28, right? Like, I've been in this country damn near all 28, save for like two months. I was born in Mombasa, you know, refugee camp of Tanga Kurusha, you know, and then we came to the states. It's been about 30 years since the war and everything, right? It's not 2022. You feel me? Coming up on in 30 years or whatever. And people might get upset about this, but we might not go back to Somalia. Mm. I know a lot of people are like, they got their suitcases from, from 93 in the 90s still by the door. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. one day we're about to go back. Yeah. It's been 30 years. What if it takes another, what if it takes 60, what if it takes 90 years for another, what they can yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? We have to plant roots in this country. Mm -hmm. We can't be halfway in, you know what I mean, with 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 the success of us and our people in Waddan Khan. And mashallah to everybody who's opened a business, people who are holding political office, community leaders. There's a lot of us who are planting roots here, mm -hmm. but there is this still this psychological thing of like being halfway in in terms of Waddan Khan. And, and part of that comes to representation. Part of that comes to holding political office. But if we don't see ourselves as having an active hand in the success of our people in Dutkani within the Twin Cities, within Toronto, within London, I mean, London is a bit different because there's like a hundred year history of some of them mm -hmm. in the UK. That's that. That's I mean, that's crazy in of itself. But the fact that we've been here 30 years and some people really think that tomorrow everything's going to all our problems back home are going to be solved like that. Yeah. And we've been seeing, you know, issues still yeah. is, is ridiculous to me. And, and, I, and I think that part of that is because we don't see ourselves in the American tapestry. We don't see ourselves on TV. We don't see ourselves in film. We don't see... Because The Gravedigger's Wife is a beautiful film, but it was filmed in Djibouti and it was about a story about Djibouti and Djibouti and Somalia. You know what I mean? I'd love to see content about Somali Americans living here, yeah. which is something that is coming up right now. I, I, I just got to work on a project on, on, on Little America season two mm -hmm. that showcases that how, you know, the story of. So, and, and they, you know, they, they put this publicly, so I can say this, there's some stuff I can't say, but the, what I can say is it's an episode about a young Somali man who opens a restaurant and he wants to share the culture yep. with everybody, yeah. not just, you know, just the candy, you feel me? And so that to me is a, is a, is a perfect metaphor of like, yo, the American dream. Yes, there's barriers. Yes, there's, you know, issues, systemic racism. There's a lot of, bro, speaking about the thirties that we've been here. My nigga, we got hit with like a hundred years of racism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
Wallah, they gave us the, the welcoming wa- committee. The white folks said, who are these niggas? They just got here? They just, got, they just came here? Just give them everything dilla, one dilla, time. Dilla. <laughs> you know? They just threw us a heavy ass duffel Wallah. bag of 400 years of systemic. Straight up, And bro. we just went, boom, boom. Wallah, and, and listen, man. Ilahi, you know, mahallah, I'm a, I don't want to butcher the ayat, but it's like, you know, like he doesn't give people a problem that they can't bear. Oh yeah, me? yeah, yeah. And we built we we built different. So mm-hmm. I'm you feel Facts. me? Like I love our people for that. But it's like we're African, we're black, mm-hmm. we're Muslim, we're refugees, mm-hmm. we're immigrants. Nigga, we got hit with racism. We got hit with incarceration, yeah. criminal justice system, systemic racism. We got hit with surveillance. We were talking about earlier. Yep. We got hit with xenophobia. We got hit with deportation. Nigga, we get hit with everything. Yeah. And we still out here like shrugging that shit off. Like yo, we still here. We still rocking. Mm-hmm. And that's, a, and that's a point to our people that like, yo, if we got through all of that and we're still going through all of that, we in here to, we got, we got to at least tell these people we ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And I want to trace that back to the elephant in the room. Yeah. On how we got here. Yeah. Because we were just starting that conversation yeah. before. Sure. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, wear yeah, the watch, you know, my you nigga. Gotta, you got to wear the watch. Yeah, you got to hit him a little bit. You got to, you know what I mean? I got to, I got to show them again. Yeah. Put it, I put it back in the, in the, I didn't want to mess it up. You know what I'm saying? Sure, but, sure. See what I'm saying? Blah. But let's speak see what I'm saying? Give it, give it a few years. The whole crew getting rollies. You feel me? TikTok, TikTok. Oh, yes, clip sir. that, my <laughs> Oh, yeah, clip that. I said like two yeah. years, two, three years. Yeah. Whole crew getting rollies. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Even though, Sooner. like, Sooner. economically, it's not very smart. I personally no, no, wouldn't no, no, get no, myself. No, 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 no. Watches, watches go up. They, I, I watches mean, if it's, if it's, if it's, it's not clean, busted, it's yeah, plain Jane. Plain James, plain James. Oh, you getting bus bus now. You get the bus yeah. now. Of course I'm getting a bus <laughs> now. It's a real nigga. Fuck, I'm going to get a plain Jane for Nigga, I grew up in the hood, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> I studied economics in college. You're going to see me, Sean. You're going to see me, Sean. I studied economics in college, and they taught me everything about depreciation and everything. And I'm like, fuck that. Yeah, that's cool, and I'm still getting the chain. (laughs) (laughs) It's for different reasons, brother. I got to shine. I I fuck with it. I fuck with it. You got it. I'm the first one to say, yeah, like, I'm not really knowledgeable on just the tahi and why it happened and stuff Mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. So just trying to get a better understanding through your, your, both of your lenses Mm -hmm. onto why it happened. And I Mm -hmm. feel like, I mean, it's funny. I mean, I brought it up and I feel like now even like talking about it, it's like a, such a pff, controversial subject. It's yeah. crazy. You feel me? Like it really is. Because like people have different reasons different of why reasons, happened, Different perspectives. Different perspective. You and there's the I mean? larger perspective of like, well, what, what hand did the Western world have? Everything. In, in destroying our nation. Everything. You know, it's, it's funny. I, before I studied, because you and I studied, uh, we took communications classes together at the U. I wanted to study global study. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was like exactly that. What were the external... Bro, Mother we were a part of the Soviet bloc with, you know, Siad Bare, right? <laughs> yeah. We was we was kicking it with the Russians. So, okay, I didn't know this. I took my wool to the... Speaking of like, you know, learning from our parents and grandparents, bro, I took my wool to the eye doctor one time, right? I'm like, okay, cool, boom. We're just kicking it. We're in the lobby. We get to the, see the doctor. <laughs> bro speaks Russian? Speaks Russian. Yeah. He's like, huh? yet. Uh, Hello, comrade. I'm or some shit. You yeah. know, I'm yeah. like, yo, oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> when the fuck? I'm looking at them. I'm yeah. like, yo, I'm finna report y'all niggas yeah. to the fucking CIA. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got a couple KGB agents over here. <laughs> like, yo, we like this is crazy to me. Yeah. And and that and that goes to, I guess, it's like, okay, is it on my will to tell us everything, or is it on us to Ask, have that yeah. have that fascination? That lot, you feel yeah. me? We should be asking questions. You feel me? And 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 I think podcast is a great way. Somebody, you know what I mean? That's a podcast idea for some Allah to, yeah. you know what I mean? Start interviewing our people, you feel me? Or interviewing our elders. And so he started going crazy with the Russian with her. And I'm like, yo, I didn't even. So it's crazy. So we, we had a relationship with the Russians, right? Boom. Then we had this issue with Ethiopia, right? Mm-hmm. Shouts out to all our Habashas, you feel me? We, we co- you know, we coexist we here. It's beautiful. Asked, we was definitely on them we niggas' on asses, there. you feel me? <laughs> it's all love. It's all love. It's yeah. all love. No, I love them. I love them. You know, but it's all love. But, you know, it was war. Mm-hmm. War is war, you feel me? 77 Kamhala. We got a lot of fucked up stories about what happened there, you know? And that's, it's funny. We, uh, some other, we, we, we tighten up and we, we come together when we got an outside enemy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the funny part. That's the funny real part. Real it? It's called the, yeah. it's the German effect. It's kind of yeah. how Germany yeah. was yep. before Hitler came. Coming, oh, yeah. And then yeah, Hitler yeah, came yeah. and then he gave them a common enemy yep. and them niggas just became the best of friends. The best of friends, they, bro. And before that, though, they, they were like, yep. some other people, they couldn't yeah. stand they each couldn't other. They couldn't stand each other. Yeah. Well, like, that's, that, that's, that's the craziest thing, though. That, yeah, like that Germany effect that we, we need a common enemy. Mm-hmm. And then, unless, because I really do think that's the issue. I think, I think, bec- I think we're at a point right now in the world where it's like, Niggas you know? don't be fighting like that anymore. Niggas, niggas don't be fighting. Niggas <laughs> definitely don't be fighting like that. Alhamdulillah. Niggas don't. Alhamdulillah. That's why in America, folks yeah. are turning on each other because yeah. it's like it's a, it's yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. thing when you study in political science. It's like yeah. 
for some nations, the way that they're set up, the way their nationalism is set yeah. up, they yeah. have to have someone to be their guess, enemy. Yep. Now, ain't nobody beefing with the U.S. Yeah, now. Them no. niggas is, they're, try, they're trying with the whole Russia, Ukraine yeah, but thing. But still, them niggas, yeah. nobody's ever going to just come yeah. out like they used to back in the day and be like, straight up, fuck you, the U.S. Because 9-11 yeah. helps. It did. 9-11 had, what did, what, did, what did Dave Chappelle say? And he's like, on 9-11, oh, we're we all Americans. Yeah. Yeah. That airplane like, yeah. one was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. 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 My nigga Dave Chappelle is fucking goat. He goat said, he said you, back in the day, you used to walk on a plane, the white man would just look at you like, damn, I got to sit with this nigga. Yeah. <laughs> and then now it was just like, yo, it's you and an Arab. And he's like, yo, my nigga, come on, man. Yeah, come sit. <laughs> I got to sit right said, here for he you. He said, man. I had my eyes on that oh, motherfucker man. the entire trip. Bro, he, he killed me when he was like, he was like, he was like, 9-11 made us all Americans. You know, he's seen those commercials. I'm an American. I'm an American. He's like, Hurricane Katrina to happen uh you niggas get over here yeah like you niggas again he was like and niggas he, and white came, people he came at uh what's his name um fuck ain't nobody want to hear what ja Rule gotta yeah, say yeah, what is, what is, what is, and oh, at yeah. the time like where is jaw where is jaw <laughs> where is jaw <laughs> Yo, no, it, it, go 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 and well you're right though he's like having that common enemy what which is you know whatever it was for for us being terrorists you know mm -hmm. what i mean it was it was something that grew people up and so 77 key it was Somalia versus the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like oh, yeah. we, we, we were supposed to be locked up with the Russians and the Cubans, but because we invaded Ethiopia, they turned on us. Mm -hmm. So it was Mrekinka against, I think, I think part of it, they became, Mrekinka became our ally in that aspect too, which is crazy. It's like Ethiopia was independent. I might be butchering this, like historians can definitely let me know. But from what I understood, it was that that was the point where our own allies, Soviet allies, went against us. You feel me? And that just that really kind of showed how we come together in those type of moments. But in terms of in terms of our history, bro, like well, I we're we're what it what it uh I think it was Michael Strahan who said this. Somebody said this. He was like, We're losing recipes. Mm. You remember this? This that's a is a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. it was a joke or whatever. But anyway, we're losing it's, recipes. It's like, I know what you like, mean. Yeah, he was like, yeah, he's like, we're losing recipes. The women are out here working, da da da. Yeah. Like no one's in the in the kitchen cooking. We're losing recipes, you know. <laughs> so we're losing recipes, y'all. Yeah. You know. But but the but the point being that if we don't actively ask questions about and and ninety three is a point where it's a very you know yeah. the mahala the civil war is a very fine point that we do have to get back to and, and extrapolate and I think. That can't be a conversation we have here in one go because it's, there's so much going it's on and so there's, there's a lot. It's that like it's it. like some shit happened and there's like this angle and yep. it's very clear from this yep. angle. And then you go over there and you're like, hold on, yep. gang. There's yep. all this shit going on over here. And then you yep. go over there. And this is like, yeah, yep. you're right. It's very complicated. It's, it's, it's too complicated, but it's something that I at least I just want to put it out there. We should talk about it, mm -hmm, whether it's at home, whether it's amongst professionals. I mean, I'll tell you right now, these these European white scholars talk about it. All the time. They write papers on it. Mm, they make money off of they it. They make good money off These of entire it. textbooks. Uh, yep. The Civil War in Somalia. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. And they get yeah. funded by, by schools, funded. now that I think about by it. By Martin G. Smith, yep. PhD. Yep. Bro, one time I was, at, I was at a university talk with this Adan scholar, this Dutch woman. Mm. And she was... She wrote a book called Clan Cleansing in Somalia, which is like crazy title. <laughs> crazy. She didn't even say genocide. She's like, no, I made up the term clan cleansing because these niggas was going at it. You uh, know? Have you all have seen Black Hawk Down to kind of get into course. the right? Black Hawk Down? It was like the, the opening scene uh, title screen was like Somalia, 19, whatever, yeah. 92, 93. The Supers? Uh, yeah, I think it was like October, like the month I was born, 93. Yeah, and, and, and it was like... Um, they said the war was on biblical proportions. <laughs> these niggas was killing each other. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, these niggas making us sound like some savage ass niggas. But we was on some savage ass. But I heard it was shit, crazy bro. though. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Oh, they was telling me she was she was running one time and like they had to drink water out of a pond with dead bodies. But and the crazy thing is, people up. like the number that like right oh, right before that. Now. Bro, that's the golden age. I mean, the, the Somalia had golden ages. Don't get me wrong. Ancient, ancient, medieval Somalia. If I could live in a, in a time, mm -hmm. my nigga, I'd be a fucking Ajuran Empire oh, you know yeah, yeah, soldier, yeah. my nigga. Yeah. Fucking up the Portuguese. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, to have my folks. You know, I love y'all. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We, we love to the eat. Portuguese you know what I mean? will lie. But the Portuguese, bro, we, we we're won the one first, war. We're the first, uh, yeah, yeah, we're the first African nation to, like, we to beat a European cut in, in the sea. Sorry. Like, at we war. Them, I hugged them. In no. the ocean, fam. <laughs> the yeah. Ottomans couldn't even handle and, No, that's the crazy. This, the Ottomans couldn't handle this, them. I can bet on my life. Yeah. Not a single Somali soldier knew how to swim. Yeah. <laughs> them niggas was just out in the water. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll give us a... They say that the Somali Navy was the best in the world. Wow. Before the British Navy. 
So people talk about the British Navy till this day. Pirates of the Caribbean, the British Navy is the best yeah. Navy in the ocean, blah, blah, seven seas. We were the best. We were the best. <sighs> See, this is we history that I'm not going to lie to you. Like, if someone made short films about, right? Or short like, blockbusters. Bro. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Game of Thrones, yeah, Somali thing, though, version. Look, another thing though. You feel me? We had like so, a Johnny Depp. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> peep this though, peep this though, peep this though. So Caribbean culture. Yep. Right, like you said, Pirates of the Caribbean, but just yep. Caribbean, Caribbean Cuban. Yep. Uh, uh, I love where you're going with this. Trinidad, Tobago, yep. all that yep. is very, very present yep. in world culture. Right, I fucking love where you're going because with this, they're eh? they're they've been the best at something. Yep. Right, Mansa Musa yep. and and that kind yep. of uh, Mali yep. Empire, they've yep. been the best at something, and it's very present and prevalent yep. in movies. Like yep. it'll get referenced here and yep. there, you yep. know, yep. in very big blockbuster. Food. Explain to me how time and time and time and time yep. again. Somalia comes up in these conversations as being the best in this, yep. the best in that, yep. in the medieval times. And like there's all these like Lord of the Rings, yep. whatever it may be, all these fucking films and shows and all. And not one time is there a reference to Somalia people in that sort of regard. Unless Isn't it's fucking Blackbeard in One Piece. Somalia? Yeah, Blackbeard is yeah, that. Is yeah, in, he's yeah. f from his One Piece. He's Somali treasure. too. Yeah, yeah. His treasure, they say, is somewhere near the coast of Somalia. We have the yeah. longest coastline in 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 africa bro yeah. we oh, have that we have bro. one of the we have yeah. one of the earliest lighthouses yeah. um in in the world yeah. we have one of the oldest cities Mordisha, yeah. ever silk like, road yeah. The yeah. silk road we yeah. have the caves uh, yeah. up north oh, and yeah. then so beyond part, that the paintings yeah. the painting beyond yeah. that wallahi like the deep deep and rich history that we have with islam yeah. one yeah. with just economics with science yeah. with whatever it may be yeah. Just so why is this so dark when you look at just the country in general? Like how did, like you said, when you when you take a little like yeah. a telescope to the Cuban Cuban yeah. islands, right? Yeah. History it just yeah. pops at it you, just right? Pops. But then when you look at Somalia, you just see the Rafah that is currently going on. I, I, so yeah. is it partly? I think it's to two things. I think it's two things. I think it's because we have an oral tradition. Mm. Oh yeah, that's you facts. Well, you know, we we started. I mean, we had Arabic that we were writing with, but we didn't have a formal language until the seventies. Right, mm -hmm. so everything was just passed down. Shekoin, you feel me? And yeah. like, so that's one aspect. The other aspect, when you're talking about the Caribbean culture, is like, I was looking at this the other day. Funny enough, I was like, Jamaica has a population of three million people. Mm. The island, Little Ice Island, but Rasta, mm -hmm. Bob Marley, the culture, yeah, the culture Jamaican. is global. Jamaican yeah. culture, Jamaican food, global. You you're feel me? Yeah. You feel me? And what it is? It's two things, right? So the oral tradition, we don't, we don't have the records. We have other. We have the Portuguese. Yeah. The Portuguese got a lot of writings about Somalia. The Ottomans have a lot of rising mm -hmm. po positive stuff. You know, of course, because we were part of the Ottoman Empire. But the Portuguese were like, yeah, yeah. You know, we really didn't lose that first war. It wasn't like <laughs> that. Them niggas be lying, yo. You know what I mean? So <laughs> niggas, what do they say? History goes to the victor. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. And and and, and who, whoever writes, you know what I mean? The the, the ledger. Yeah. But the Jamaicans, what they've done is. Is they've monetized their culture. Yes. You feel me? What <laughs> did y'all see? This is years ago, but did y'all see how Urban Outfitters started selling Batis? No way. No, I did not see yeah. that. Urban so, Outfitters? Yeah. So this was kind of more. So I think the sisters are posting this. And it's a yeah. 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 So, nigga, why is there not a Somali nigga? Right, or like, like they're doing their thing, yeah. putting the Batis up. You feel me? And 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 boosting that signal now. But if it isn't for us to like. Put up the ma'awis and be like, yo, it's comfy, this and that. And if, if y'all niggas ever want to buy ma'awis, come to us. You know yeah. what I mean? Not Nordstrom, not no Urban Outfitters. So what Jamaicans have done is mm -hmm. they've set up shop in different communities. The, the other analogy is, is uh, Chinatowns, right? Yeah. I think Andrew was talking about, Andrew Schultz was talking about this one time. He was like, yo, look at Chinatowns in different cities around the world. These people share their culture, Indian food. Indians go to different white communities like, yo, you want some Indian food? And he's like, oh yeah, this is better than my bland ass food. Let me, yeah. you know what I mean? And what do they do? They make money off of these people. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And so that's what it is, is that that candy is like, we love ourselves a lot, which is amazing and beautiful and powerful, but it's also, we have to love ourselves so much that we want to share it with the rest yeah. of the world. We cater me? to yeah. ourselves. We a cater lot. to ourselves. You know what, you know what it boils down to now that I like really deeply think about it, mm -hmm. the oral history thing that you said, yep. when you have an oral history, you're in charge of speaking. Yep. And, and being vocal about because yep. it's no longer leaving a writing put it somewhere yep. in a fucking cave somebody will pick it up and yep. read it yep. you gotta be the loudest nigga in the room yeah. if you have an oral history right yep. niggas stop talking bro that's what happened niggas yep. just completely just stop talking bro, about the history I feel like there's a huge, it down. like y'all yep. said the elephant in the room yep. after there's just a huge sever yeah and like, not even not not nah. to say that but not to stop talking but like they lost the opportunity to speak yep. about it because of the civil war right Yeah. and then the second portion of it like you said with the Jamaicans is 
if we are not the ones that are putting our culture out there in the world, someone else will. Someone else is negatively. And then what happens is what? We're no longer in charge of our culture. Mm. More a narrative, yeah. You know what I mean? We're no longer the ones that are in charge Man. of our culture. It's other motherfuckers. Because at the end of the day, like you said, so my culture is so fucking amazing. Yep. It's going to end up out there in the world. People want people who's gonna talk be, about Who's going to be the one doing it? Is it going to be like us? Like you said, what was yeah. it, the 15.2 billion views 15, on TikTok? Definitely, definitely. But like, uh, Who has 15.2 billion views? No, yeah, uh, Somali. Somali hashtag on TikTok is 15.2 billion views on TikTok. One of the biggest hashtags. One of the biggest 15.2. I thought I, I was quoting it to you earlier yeah. saying 1 billion. Nigga said 15. Yo, uh, Mahad, <laughs> every TikTok? So my hashtag so loud, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen point two no, but, billion. But, but it's but, but what you just said about that though, because most of those uh, hashtags is being used by Janubi folks. What I'm yeah. You feel me? Because they're like, oh yeah, these Somali people love anything that has a hashtag on yeah. it. But that comes to our love for ourselves and our people, and 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 because we're a diaspora, we want to connect with each other. You feel me on a global sense? But what you were saying about um. And I always tell people this all the time, especially people who are like, why are you in media? Why do you, why do you want to make movies? Why are you trying to be in television? You know what I mean? They're always talking about, they always, I'm like, yo, it's so funny. It's like, I'm not going to make, you know, fucking HBO shows with like the most nudity, the most profanity. I could, if I say I'm in media, I could be doing National Geographic and putting a camera yeah. on zebras for 24 hours <laughs> and eating off of that. You feel me? This like, is like, the zebra in its natural habitat. Here yeah. we are with the water buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Hour 13. And I, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's, that's, how, that's the range of media. You yeah. feel me? But what you're saying, bro, is, is exactly what I tell people. If I'm not doing this work, well, I'm, basically, if, if, if I'm not having an active hand, if it's a Somali person not having an active hand in our own story, We've definitively said, say whatever you want to say about mm -hmm. us. Yeah. You're, 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 you're act, when you take yourself out of the equation, you're basically saying, oh, I don't care what you say about us. So how the fuck are we going to say to people, yo, don't be in media, and then at the same time saying, yo, the media is not portraying us right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like it's stupid. I feel like it's the fear of representing everyone. Because once yeah. one person says, yo, yeah. this is a Somali film and it yeah. was made by this Somali <laughs> Going guy. Back to the criticism, who yeah. the fuck do yeah. you yeah. think yeah. you are? But you got to be gangster. <laughs> to represent you gotta us. You got to no, be. No, well, Allah, you got to be gangster. You got to be. Because I talk about, I, I tell people this all the time. It's like, Alhamdulillah, Hamza, me and you have the pleasure to be sitting here and to have an actual audience and yeah. like people. I don't know for for whatever reason people want to listen to us yeah. to talk for not an for, hour. Not, not for no 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 no. Not, no, 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 no. <laughs> not for whatever reason. Yeah. I got to give you guys these flowers, bro. What you guys have done here, bro. Yes. I'm, I'm telling you, man. No, well, like to, to two goats, you feel me? I guess you guys calling me a goat. Yeah, a goat to goats, you know what I mean? How Lameshan, you know? I got to scoop the yeah. So mashallah. It's what you guys are doing to 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 push the conversation. Yeah. Right. It's it's one thing for us to have. We see a lot of people having the same conversations. You guys are pushing the conversation, mm -hmm. having these conversations. And people gravitating towards that is is not only, number one, a testament to you guys and, and, and the great conversations you're curating, but it's also uh, a testament to the need for these conversations. Yeah. People want to listen. People want to talk and, and, and hear from folks like yourselves. Be like, you know, I agree with that. Oh, nigga, I, I was thinking that too. You yeah. feel me? And, and that's what we need in our community. And so I just want to say, don't... Yeah, appreciate like, that, brother. You know? Shout Allah, I appreciate that. But like, alhamdulillah, to have something like that, mm -hmm. you have to be gangster enough to, to be like, oh, I oh, bet yeah. I want all the smoke. Yeah. I want all the criticism. Like if yeah. I, inshallah, I plan on doing this, but like if I make films about Somali people, yeah. there's going to be criticism because my interpretation of Somali Nimo mm -hmm. is not the same as your interpretation of Somali. And yeah. that's perfectly fine. Ain't not, well, there's a fear of that. That's what's stopping a lot of people from, from making this art yeah. is there's a fear of that pushback. But that's art. If your art doesn't piss off people, you ain't doing shit. Yeah, you're doing some yeah, easy yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah, no, art, art, <laughs> you're doing art, some yeah. money grab. You, yeah, you're doing yeah. a money grab. And when I say yeah. like, and again, don't misquote me and like go out there and make the most outlandish Somali yeah. film. Yeah. When I say piss off, I mean, it makes people ask questions. It makes yeah. people go, well, why did you do this? And why yeah. did you do that? And it makes them question themselves and their yeah. existence. That's the Absolutely. fucking point. Not, yeah. hey, let me give these people the what they want and what yeah. they're used to. That's lame, bro. No, That's just... been there, done that. Like we've seen that. Yeah. Do some gangster shit. Do some new shit. You know, but you got to be able to, like you said, yeah, mm -hmm. take that criticism and got to. and push back to it. Well, I hundred percent. The the thing too is um, collaboration, mm. right? Like you, you guys partner with this. You got people behind the scenes. You know what I mean? It's it's iron sharpens iron at the end of the day. You feel me? And um, with my, with my experience on on Little America, that was my job. I was the 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 position was technical consultant, but really I was also referred to as a cultural consultant. Yeah. Before you even get it, how did you even get that opportunity? Yeah. So 
You know, yeah, can you give a synopsis of yeah, what the actual it, film was as well? Yeah, so so Little America is a television show on Apple TV. Um, it's in the second season. It's produced by folks like Kumal Nanjiani. Uh, people know him from you know uh, Eternals and you know the 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 into them how the Indian guy from there. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah. So him, and I think he's in, he's in a bunch of other shows. And he, uh, also Lee Eisenberg, one of the producers of The Office. Alan Yang, producer of Master of None, Parks and Rec. So this is a big NBC affiliated project that. Apple TV is distributing and they're on season two. And the whole show is basically it's like black mirror episodic It's called the episodic anthology series where every single episode is like its own movie, different mm -hmm. stories, different cultures. And, and every episode is about a little piece of America with like Ninkan, uh, who's Nigerian, Naktan, who's Arab, you know, and just yeah. like basically just showcasing what immigrants bring value to this country. You feel me? And it was about damn time they put some of my people in it. You yeah. feel me? Like we came through, bro, man. Mashallah. It was a, it was a great experience. And um, the, the way I got into the project was uh, I had reached out to Melody uh, Bahan at uh, the Minnesota Film Society. I'm not sorry, not the Minnesota Film Society, but the Minnesota TV Film Commission, our mm -hmm. board um, here, which is an office that is, it's a nonprofit. And unfortunately, it's the only state film board in the entire country out of all 50 states that's a nonprofit. Every other film office in the country is attached to the government. So it's wow. like the California Film Office is a is an agency of the state government, New York, Georgia, you feel me? There's tax money allocated to it. And so last year we actually passed a, a legislation passed legislation in the state house that the governor signed which actually boosted the amount of money that goes towards filming in Minnesota and also lowered the tax incentive. So it's like if you spend, say, if you spend 100 racks on a movie, right, like very, very small budget, there's a rebate now that actually gives you back 25% if you, as long as you spend money in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So that's how these states compete with each other. California's top dog, but Georgia, that's why a lot of, that's why Tyler uh, Perry Atlanta, doing yeah. his thing, you feel me? And, and Atlanta, the Marvel, the Marvel, movies, Marvel movies. Marvel movies, you feel yeah. me? That's how this nigga made a billion dollars, was he said, I'm going to build a whole soundstage on, this is gangster as fuck, what Tyler Perry did. <laughs> This man bought a Confederate fort <laughs> and said, I'm going to make movies on here and make a billion dollars. You feel wow. me? And he used the state incentives of those tax cuts, those rebates, and had the now Minnesota is coming up on there. Minnesota right now is where Georgia is, or where Georgia was 10 years ago. Mm. So now Georgia is actually beating California in terms of how many TV shows and movies is shot and is, is more in Georgia. So Ozark, uh, Stranger Things, all these different HBO shows, yeah. all shot in Atlanta. You Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. The show Atlanta too is the show shot, Atlanta huh? too. You feel me? Fulton County and like, yeah. it's it's a beautiful thing to show because it's like black people are getting to work on these sets. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, given given when this comes out on June twenty fifth, there's actually going to be an opportunity by a woman, uh, Alicia. I'm, I'm blanking on her last name, but Alicia, she's from Atlanta. She's going to be doing a Zoom panel on how to be a p production assistant. Yeah. So that's how I started off. Was like, yeah, doing I signed up for that. You did, but, yeah. but beautiful man, because Nakhtan, she she's gotten uh, backing from the state officials there, where I think the the, the mayor put money up to like you know for like a, a good amount, good amount of people to get trained into it. So. So Georgia's on the come up, Minnesota's on the come up. So I'm talking to Melody about like, yo, I see what you did with Minnesota, the tax credit. Let me interview you. So again, my 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 day job during the day is I'm a journalist. I write for Sahan Journal, Spokesman Recorder, uh, right now Southwest Voices in South Minneapolis. And so this was a story that I pitched. This to, man is a goat. Yeah. Let me yeah. just say that. Oh, sure, sure, I just, sure, we give you. flowers here. So yeah, whenever someone starts spinning some fire, thank you, thank you, I appreciate you, bro. Because that and, that and that was another thing, man. I've always loved to do films. I've always wanted to be in TV. I always wanted. I used to do theater in, in, in high school. You know what I mean? I was hey, like, you feel theater me? kids yeah, again. Theater kids. Three, 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 three. Yeah. We gotta do this something. The second bro. time, third time. It might be bro. the fourth. The fourth fly. time. Yeah, we yeah. Had, we've had a lot of people. We who've got way done. too much talent in this yeah. city not to do something, bro. Yeah, facts. Got way too man. much talent not to do something. Well, life's a crime. So we got it. We got it. We definitely got to do some work in that. And so I wanted to be in movies. I wanted to, you know. But then I was like, you know, there's so many real life stories that people's not telling. Yeah. The media's getting us fucked up. The media's only telling the negative stories. I'm like, yo, let's let's get into the. Po so I started interviewing people. Start writing positive stories. Small business reporting is where I started off, and then I just took it from there. And so, and then, so now I'm getting to the political reporting world and I'm like, yo, you've got this tax credit. What's up with that? What, what kind of, you know, what, what, what is it going to do for black and brown people? You feel me? We've got a lot of communities here. And so I, I recently uh, dropped that piece about how one of the first HBO shows, I think it might've been the first HBO miniseries was shot in St. Paul Wow. called Laurel Avenue. And it was about a black family, just one weekend in the household of a black family. So 
I mean, shouts out to all the amazing, amazing cre- black creators right now, like, you know, Issa Rae, Donald Glover, you feel mm-hmm. me, Mahala Shonda Rhimes, uh, uh, Jordan Peele, pushing the culture forward 100%. in this way. And, and they're coming from people like, you know, from the 90s and 80s who are slowly rolling into that. And so, you know, per- movies like Purple Rain that showcase Minneapolis, yeah. again, Laurel Avenue that showcase Minnesota, uh, St. Paul in that way, were the kind of seeds that created the film scene here. So Minnesota actually was the third place to shoot movies and TV shows behind L.A. and New York. Wow. Minnesota was up there. But because Canada, shout out to all our Canadian Somalis, you feel me? Smoke because, you know, Canada said, oh, you guys are doing the state shit. We're going to lower it federally and beat ah, all of you niggas. Wow. <laughs> you know? So that's why Vancouver got the biggest, yep. one of the biggest, you feel me? All these TV shows in Vancouver. So, so long story short, I talked to Melody. I interview her about this piece and she calls me three weeks later and she's like, oh, my friend Scott in LA is uh, looking for a Somali filmmaker to help with this TV show. Are you free? I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I'm do you free, need me? I'm free now. I'm free now. Just, you know, and she's like, hey, 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 relax. Thirsty ass nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, all right, all right. But, you, you know, months later, you know, I uh, I got the chance to fly out to LA. And, well, I was, a, I can't wait for folks. To, so I can't talk too much about the thing, but, it, but I can definitely say that it's about a young Somali man who opens up a restaurant. And he, uh, there's a bit of it about the state fair that's involved in it. And it's based yeah. on a true story that you know wow. folks can connect the dots they know who i'm talking about and and i actually ran into the guy i mean, I mean the, the, they have a book by the way there's a book called little america that the show is based off of so jamal who you know started safari shouts out to him another goat you guys should definitely have yeah. him here man shouts out to him. that's that's the brother man i i only seen him over facetime and i'm like and i bumped into him at a restaurant just recently and i'm like nigga we just made a show about you bro. <laughs> like you're a real life you yeah. know what i mean real life motherfucker you know so we chopped we chopped it up and, and it was love and um that whole experience to me was was a whirlwind because it's like traditionally to get into hollywood right quote unquote hollywood the industry uh especially on the back end right so i'm not speaking about acting what we see right like mm-hmm. the things that people typically see is they see the actors maybe they'll know a director you know this and that and, and that's it I'm working with the producers. I'm working with the clothing designers. I'm working with hair and makeup. I'm working with, you know, the production designers. I'm working with all of those folks to make sure everything is accurate. Wow. And that's a lot of pressure, (laughs) you know, especially, especially if you're the cultural consultant. Yeah. But I had an amazing, amazing, amazing group of people to work with me. Shouts out to another goat, my my sister, Idil Ibrahim, who wrote the episode. A Somali sister wrote the episode. Wow. Oh, my you feel me? And, and and when it comes to, in terms of like, you know, there was just like, yeah, I, I don't know how to like, the, the analogy I would use is just refinement. You know, it was just like, I would do work. I mean, she wrote the whole damn episode, right? So she made sure to make sure this was like a cultural piece. You feel me? And then I come in as a cultural consultant to make sure and everything was like on point. And then we had our sister, Ifrah Ahmed, who was the language consultant. And she was on point with everything too. You feel me? And so like from one to another, we were just like, yo, does this look right to you? Does this? And even some of our actors were just like, yo, I prefer saying it like this. And that's right on, on paper. But like, let's, you know, let's make it more conversational. This is this and that. So it was a group effort. It was a, it was a beautiful thing thing and the traditional way again is that how i got into as a production assistant you kind of work your way up so you start off as a production assistant with with this training that's coming up in the 25th is if you want to be a production assistant you can be a production assistant to the camera team Mm -hmm. or you can be a production assistant to the sound team or you can be a production assistant to set design production design all these different departments on the film set and then you it's like an apprenticeship you get you know brought up you get you know you, you you learn from your from your mentors in this aspect i got into the back door Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I said, yo, let me in. <laughs> yeah, so I got in and, and, and now I'm working with the heads of these departments and they're coming to me asking me, yo, is this clothing right? We're going to go to Anaheim to this, you know, Somali souk and, and go buy, you know, batis and go on and like, you know, hijab and like this and that. I'm going to send this employee over and do this. Or like, does this, does this food look right to you? Does this look like so, so it represents Somali food? And so. It was a, yeah, bro. It was a privilege, man. To, to, How to work was it on being on like a this. set in LA though, and like being the Somali guy that was like, <laughs> man, the the set the set life was. I mean, it was it was really interesting in terms of like it really is. It's a job. It's a job. Mm-hmm. It's a job. It's not. It's not like again. You people see the end product. Yeah, folks. Uh, think, come folks on, think, did you have a trailer <laughs> though? Come yeah, on, come on. we gotta ask the right questions, yeah. y'all. Yeah. But for yeah. real, though, they, think yeah. they think people think it's like making movies is shits and yeah. giggles. It's a game. Like you yeah. out there for out there hours, work. crack of dawn, hours. crack of dawn. 
like yeah. like no joke because i feel like a lot of people get it from the perspective of the actors yep. right? where yeah. they're like yo yep. we're on set for like we did a little shoot for 45 minutes yep. we did our thing we went back in our trailer and we we ate shit we just talked shit for three four hours yeah. mm-hmm. compared to everyone else that's the grueling. moving piece grueling constantly moving there's 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 union members who you know grips uh electricians yeah there's people who have like certifications behind some of the shit that they do and and those are the people who really you know get the get the production going there's, and there's you know. people whose their entire job is to move the lens yeah <laughs> that's yeah. it yeah well lie there's and to yeah. control that because the, yeah. the cameras that they have take three people to man yep. three yep. to four people to man like yep. thunder knows about this too yep. they make hundreds of thousands of dollars yep. so it's just their job is to yeah. That's yep. it, yep. bro. Yep. I don't know. My, I'm a tech. I'm a tech nerd. Yep. Right. So I equate everything back to tech. Yeah. It's the same thing with building the application. I yeah. swear. Because yeah. everyone just sees the front, which like, oh my god, look quality, how pretty yeah, it is. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. But like, no one talks about like the back end engineers yep. that are making yeah. sure that button you click registers to the yep. right place. Yep. And that person, like you said, is making hundreds of thousands hundreds of dollars of thousand just connecting dollars. those two dots. So. And all they see of that person is the end credit so-and-so you know assistant camera or yeah. so-and-so did focus you know what i mean like that's a great that's a that's a phenomenal point because it's like i bro they said there was 200 people mm. working on our episode wow 200 that's people small though yeah, it's small it's small, well, yeah, that's a small it was set. like eight we had like eight main characters something around that and then like you know hundreds of extras you know what i mean and mm. and shouts out to the somali community in san diego for showing up shouts out to the the, the relatively small community in la that showed up Shout out to the niggas from Seattle. We have people from Sweden. We have people from all over the world help out on this production behind the camera and in front of the camera. Um, but I want I want people to know that point exactly, that yeah. there are jobs and, and things that you can do behind the lens, literally behind the lens. You can be a sound engineer. You can be the, like people pulling focus, people holding the camera. And these people make good And they're money. talented as hell talented. to be doing that. Very you know? talented. One yeah. question that I had was we talked about monetization. Yep. And just selling your art. Yep. Right now, I don't. I don't think we've made it. Have we made a dime on the podcast? No. Nope. I don't think we've made a dime. No. Nope. Let's change that. So, yeah. Questions. And this is this is how we learn. Why? And this yep. is the honestly why we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. Just yep. asking questions yep. to people who've done it. Let's change that. Yeah. How can we change that? I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all no. gave some people some free. You know what I mean? Some shout free outs. press. <laughs> you guys gave shout outs. You yeah. know what I mean? But but there's two other. There's two ways really. Is and this is the funny thing is that uh, the news media right that I work in. They had that issue just recently with, you know, newspapers not being physical no more to now being online. What do they do? You go to New York Times, Star Tribune page. What do they say? Hey, nigga, give us a dollar if you want to read this news real quick. You want to figure out if there's traffic today? You want to figure out what's going on in politics? Oh, you're not Give us a dollar, my nigga. (laughs) He's everything. Patreon. You guys need a Patreon. And 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 the kind of content you guys are giving right now, because we're giving out jewels right here. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Dab, straight up. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not to be like, you know, this and that. But there's people who literally, like, this is classes. People give university classes on how to get into the industry. These are, these are, ma- we're giving people a master class mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. We literally could charge, you charge niggas. But you guys are giving people for free, which is beautiful because it's for the culture. You're giving yeah. it for free. So no, we appreciate you. Know, you, you, know, you, know, you know, do what yeah. I can. Should Patreon, I do, should Patreon. I do Patreon. for the community? Should I do for the low? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? But Patreon is the next step for you guys, I yeah. think. You know, and, and I personally, you know, I've done podcasts in the past, you know, friends podcasts, my own podcasts. And I think that it's time for a Somali podcast network. Mm. You know what I mean? I think I think communi- community, mm. uh, you know, in a way that we band together with all the different beautiful podcasts that we have under an umbrella where then people are incentivized because what is it? What is what's the difference between a podcast network and Netflix? Nothing. Oh. Niggas is paying 15, 18 dollars for Netflix. Oh. You feel me? And. You know, and, and, and instead of doing that, it's like, okay, let me put $5 a month for, for folks from my city that yeah. I can support and get content from them. Shit I care about. Shit, shit that affects me that is closer yeah, to me than Netflix. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And Netflix, I mean, I mean listen, Netflix. We if love you. Hi- yeah, if you hire yeah, me. Yeah, we, we do. Netflix, we love you. I'm trying to work at Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix, you're great. You I love how we all just keep doing that one time. Let's try to listen to Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I'm, I might have to take a, a thing out of the the homie Andrew's book because this nigga said, "Oh, Netflix is dying. Netflix is done." This nigga 
called me up. Yo, Abdi, I'm working on a Netflix project right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, nigga, didn't you just say Netflix is done? He's yeah. like, yeah, but they but they paid niggas. So I'm yeah. like, of course, of course, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, but yeah, keep all options open, keep all doors open. But in terms of monetization, I really do think you guys could definitely leverage community businesses. Mm -hmm. Number one, just giving out shouts to ads. You know what I mean? Like that's that's for sure. But also, I think Patreon, I think, is the best because. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Shouts out to my homie Smile. He and I worked at PPS together. Very smart brother. Uh, uh, you know, he's uh, he's he's the uh, business side of like our, our production company, and I'm kind of like the artsy fartsy. But like you know, we it's like two minds in one trying to do this work that we're doing. And uh, and I was talking to him about this where it's like, yo, look at the Somali meme pages. Mm. They're going up, bro. Somali bridal, right? Just just shouts out to to our sisters. Somali bridal has like over two hundred thousand followers. Which is crazy. We love weddings. Yeah, they culture. charge too. Yeah, like and they, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To plug, right? Yeah. And so, and, and a lot of the, the meme pages, don't they? They be charging niggas, yeah. you feel me? And that's and that's what they should do. Like I, I was at Snap B last year and uh, and we were talking about, there was a social media panel mm. and everybody was asking questions about like, what's it like to have a, you know, Instagram, like how do you, how are you motivated to keep posting? And, you know, how, how does it feel to, are you insecure about your post? I'm like, how do you niggas make money? <laughs> like, nobody asked that question. Yeah, I was ask, waiting bro. for people to ask that. I was like, "How do you niggas make money off of the social media? Like, yeah. can we all keep it a buck here? Like, that's what we here for. That's what we here for. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and nobody. They're like, "Oh, that's a that's a good question." I'm like, "Nigga, that's what we here for, right?" <laughs> yeah. And, and shouts out to Abai uh, Ahlam. You know, she's a a, a great uh, influencer creator. Yeah. You know, I don't know what to call people, but she's she's on the gram. She's great. She has she a great thing. Mashallah, she's doing her yeah. thing. She's great, great individual yeah. in the community. Mashallah. Dumur Kani, bro. That's a whole other conversation. Oh yeah. They 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 do. Thing, man. <laughs> Maybe running laughs around us yes. like, can we catch up to y'all? No, no, see the Dalala. The Dalala. Yeah, but, but she made a great point. She's I forgot the amount that she said that she was quoted by an agency. They were like, Oh yeah, we can pay you, say like it was like two racks or something. And she was she looked around at like all the other people that they paid, you know, content to, and she was like, Um, I'm pretty sure so and so made more money. You feel me? Like, so she was like, uh, nah, I don't think two racks is enough. Bump it up. And what happened was, you know. She uh she got the money she asked for, you feel me? Yeah, so, mashallah. you know, if we could if we could just stop for like two yeah. seconds, yeah. What's up? Battery done? No, it didn't. I was too. I was paying attention too much. I didn't pay attention to the camera. What yeah. happened? It died. Huh? The storage? No, not the storage. It, I think it hit the thirty minute mark. Oh, okay, bad, bad, bad. Yeah. The first thirty minute or the second one? This is the third. The third, third one. Oh. oh shit! Okay, we can okay, we can wrap good. up soon, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You wanna ask the question? Yeah. Yo, Fidi. Yeah. Me and you got to sit down for, for lunch, man. I definitely. told you, y'all yes, too. I would love to. Because bro. there's definitely. like a million and one idea. We, yes, we talked about this yeah, though at the end of the. At the end of the. Yeah. The, the, yeah. No, the, the, yeah. You, the, the, the you bright, right? Or, it made no uh, sense that y'all didn't know each yeah. other. That's what We like, did like, know each other. We, yeah, we knew each other for a very long time. No, This is something I wish we could say on the podcast. I was supposed to interview this. Yeah. Let's get the cameras up, cause I got yeah, beef with this nigga. Beef. I got beef with this nigga, bro. Oh, get the cameras Wait, the up. the first get time the or the second up. time? Nah, <laughs> man. There was, there was, I think, I think it might have been the first. I, I don't, I don't know if there was like a second. But it was with um, with Burhan, right? No, with Abdi Bilal. You don't remember this? You, cause you sent him off to go play basketball. No, nah, maybe, <laughs> probably. With Pro Abdi Bilal. I was Abdi with Abdi Bilal. You're with Abdi oh, Bilal. Stop that! Stop that! Somali bridal. Oh, perfect. That's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Hold on. Like a few seconds. Yeah. All right, we can record. I was with them like in person. In person, you were training. You were running. Abdul Billah, the the runner. Yeah, I know. I was training. This is what the host don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about this. First off, first off, we got to address technical technical difficulties. You know what I mean? You can talk about that. Me sending you off. That's fine. No, no, no. It's it's not even sent up. It happens all the time. As as a reporter, as a journalist, you know what I mean. You got you got. I got like you know. Uh, experiences like you know, it's like okay, I want to get to a politician. Mm -hmm. They're busy, or like a person, and and again, uh, to you know, the reality of media and like the exploitative nature that yeah. it is. Like, I, I I occupy a weird space where like I'm a Somali, you know, reporter journalist, and I'm trying to cover our community in a good light. I remember when I was doing the documentary uh, for for PBS about you know we and I'm in the community with a camera, and I'm like, yeah, people are like, are you like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. like what the heck, you know, and and so I got used to them like, yo. I'm a guest, you know what I mean? Even though it's like the keggy, like I'm still have to, I still occupy a very weird position as somebody coming in with a camera pointed mm -hmm. at people. It's weird, you know? And same thing with like me coming at niggas with a microphone. But the the situation with my brother Mohammed yeah. over here was, 
I think this is like maybe like three years ago, maybe or two years, two and a half two years, years two ago. Two years is less than two, two years yeah, ago. Maybe yeah, maybe two years because I left. Is I left before the picture. North or news. After the picture. No, this is before. Yeah. Yeah. He changed after the picture. Yeah, oh, what picture? Wow. <laughs> what picture? You know about that the old whole. BLM picture? Yeah, that he had, where was there's a fire behind him yeah. and it went viral. First off, that's who snitched on you with that photo because if there's a fire behind you, you got the fist up. That's fed shit right yeah. there. It was during the yeah. riots. That was during it's the riots. Stop! Stop snitching on the snake. That's what I'm saying. It was during the riots. He was there at night. And then it was like that wasn't me. Bro, I have <laughs> braids. Then you got purple hair. Nigga said, "Little Uzi oh, yeah, that was there." Yeah. That's Uzi. funny as fuck. That's hot, bro. That's that was hilarious, though. But it was before yeah. then. It was, yeah, it, was probably, yeah, it was before then. But no, I was, I was just joking because it's like um, we 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 got to interview one of the goats. Mm -hmm. Speaking of like goats, Abdi, speaking Abdi of Billet, history, yeah. Abdi Bile. I got to speak to one of the goats, interview him for North News about his training program that you were a part of, yep. mashallah. Yeah. And, and I'm an was, athlete as well, guys. You feel me? Renaissance man, Renaissance man. You feel me? And, and so I had reached out to you, bro. And you're like, yeah, my name is Mohammed Salad, like the salad. You know, you did your thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, bro, I got you. I'm hit you. No answer from yeah. this nigga. Now, but again, I've done that to people. Yeah. You feel me? I've done that time and time again, whether it's like people I do want to get up with or whatever. Life is just keeps us busy, bro. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the other reality of like, whether it's like we want to get into media, whether we want to get into podcasts, there's so much, there's so much of like life that is a luxury you know, that yeah. we don't have because we got to hustle. We got to, you know what I mean? So we got to get after it. We got to get after it. A hundred percent. So speaking yeah. of getting after it, we literally have 45, 45 seconds to a minute to answer this. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for having Appreciate us. You. Uh, for, I thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course, but before we close out, mm. we ask all of our guests, inshallah, in a year's time, we want to have you back. Obviously, because we have so much more to talk about that oh, we didn't get that. to cover. Yeah. Um, but where do you see yourself in a year's time? <sighs> In a year's time. Bullet points. Quick answers. In a year's time. Um, okay, quick answers. Uh, well, I, I definitely, definitely want to have... First of all, don't let him rush you. Okay. His camera's about to die. Oh, his camera's about You're to die? You're straight. Oh, all right, bet. All right, um, is my camera right here? Him, my camera I was right here. Go. Go. Oh, yeah. he's he's going going to go. I was I was ready for it. He said, nigga, he's about to do this yeah. for my amusement. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. He really was. All right. No, in a year's time, inshallah, what I'm hoping to do, especially being somebody who's assisted others for so long, you know what I mean? Like helped others on, you know, productions, documentaries, whatever it is. I want to, A, uh, I, got a, I got a documentary feature on the way that I'm doing about the opioid crisis here in the Twin Cities. Um, I'm, you know, so I'm a New Angle fellow, and, and, and that's what I was talking about, the documentary backing stuff. And well, I, there's a lot of people in our community who are doing great work. You guys just had Abdurrahman on, you know what I mean? Shouts out to him and the work that he's doing. And, uh, uh, and, and, and a lot of the people who work at treatment centers. So I'm, I'm hoping to you know, uplift their stories and highlight them so that they can, most of the work that I want to do is highlighting people who are doing stuff, you feel me? So inshallah, I get that documentary feature done. Uh, I also want to uh, create my own short film, um, inshallah, in the, in the next, you know, hopefully in the next six months. Uh, because a short film as a director in, in, in this world is kind of your resume. Like people are not finna put you on a TV show to be a director, or give you a millions or millions of dollars for a, a feature, unless you got a cold feat, a cold short film to to really show and flex your muscle. You feel me? Um, I got a podcast coming with my cousin. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! The working title title right now is Thinning of the Veil. It's kind of, you know, it's like a yeah. You feel me? It's it's it's. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna get goosebumps right now because it's. We're talking about not taboo stuff, but we're going to be getting into the mystical realm of our reality, whether it's like Janice and, you know, like, you know, getting into like the folklore and Hell like yeah. gin stories, Hell and, you yeah. know, from like, from the perspective of professors, from the perspective of like different tribes around the world. We got monk people who are shamans, you know what I mean? Like, I want to talk to people, but like, first of all, you know, I would be like, I would be like, second of all, number one. <laughs> Yo, man, man, <laughs> like that guy. <laughs> yeah, first of all, <laughs> whoa! Uh, before, <laughs> wait a minute. Thought. Second of all, bro, we great got concept. it. You, yes. I don't know if I'm going to be watching. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Hey, man, shout with out to you. With the, watch with the lights on. Yo, listen, I was watching Stranger Things this last season like a baby, bro. I was like, yeah, I don't, I can't do this. But no, that's that's a topic that I, that's always been interesting to me, and it's a reality. You feel me? And so, yeah, yeah. and 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 that candy, we're on the forefront of that. You know, Muslimin. So I just, I don't know. I love ghost stories, all this stuff, and and I want to kind of take an academic, investigatory approach to it, um, and also kind of like make it less terrifying. You feel yeah. me? Inshallah. And uh, and then um, I will, you know. Hopefully, you guys, everybody will see Little America in a year's time. Inshallah. I will not confirm nor deny that I am on camera. Because I was working behind the scenes, but no. I might be an actor. Now I got to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> so. 
Yeah, but thank you guys, man. Thank you guys for this. Thank uh, you guys thank for the work you so that much you for do. Up. And inshallah, man, uh, I can't wait to see where you guys are in the year.